Greetings, everyone. It's the John Audio Tech Show. Aren't you glad you're taking time to watch the John Audio Tech Show? Well, we got some bench experimenting to do today. I want to play with the breakdown voltage of transistors. Well, in the other video, I was talking about the JAT501 and increasing the supply voltage to get more power out of the amplifier, but I was concerned with the driver transistors being rated 80 volts. And I was kind of curious uh, what their breakdown voltage actually is. On the data sheet, they will list the transistor's breakdown voltage, which is usually the collector to emitter voltage. And sometimes, not as often, they'll also give the collector to base breakdown voltage. And we'll take a look at that. So I set up a little circuit here. And a variable DC supply comes in through a 100K resistor and LED. The reason for that is I want to limit current. I don't want to destroy the transistor. Hopefully it doesn't damage it in any way by surpassing its breakdown voltage. But anyway, when current starts conducting, the LED will glow. I'm using sensitive high quality LED. It's a green LED that will start glowing at you can see it glow even at less than a microamp. So I can tell when the transistor is actually going to break down. The breakdown voltage is given as VCEO, which is voltage collector emitter open. When they say open, that means the base is open. And they might also provide the VCBO, which is the collector to base voltage with the emitter open and there are more which we'll talk about momentarily so let's take a look at the circuit so here's the power supply of this power transformer it has two primary windings in series for 240 or parallel for 120 so I'm just using one side to isolate from the other since they are separate Controlling the voltage with the variac. On the secondary side, we get rectified and filtered. It comes over here. have a neon bulb. It shows when the voltage is high. Discharge resistor. And, of course, a capacitor to filter it. I was using a different supply, so I, that's why there's some redundant parts there. So then the voltage comes off through the diode, then the resistor is kind of opposite from what I'm drawing here, but yeah, same difference. Then into the collector of the transistor and out the emitter. So, well, let's see what happens. This is the BD139 transistor, and uh, let's see when the little LED comes on. Okay, we're rolling here. We got 35 volts. Let's crank it up. Oh, I guess that was millivolts. Had the thing all the way down. Okay, 40 volts. Let's see when the neon strikes there. It struck at around 70 volts. I don't see any action from the LED yet. Okay, we went past 80 volts, nothing, I'll just keep cranking it, uh, we're over we're about 110 volts now, still going up, oh there it is, kicked on, let's go back Find the point where it kicks on. A little bit of hysteresis there. We'll say 130 volts. If I go below that, it goes off. Kicked in like 137 or so. And I turn it up, it gets brighter. Maxed out 182 volts.
So that's interesting. They do give you quite a bit of headroom there. I mean, there's probably some variance in manufacturing. I would have to try a bunch of the transistors to see. I'm curious, though, if I heat the transistor up, if it will conduct at a lower voltage. So I'm going to set this right below the point where it starts conducting. Okay. And heat this up a little bit. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. Yes, it did. Just a little bit. Yeah, as I turn it down, I think it's cooling off. 125. So yeah, as it gets hot, I think I got it really hot. It's cooling down though. It's back to normal. Yeah, around 130 again. Okay, so what I'm going to try now is short the base and the emitter together. What do you think will happen? Let's see. Okay, so I jumpered the base and the emitter together. We're at 130 volts. Let's crank it up. Nothing. Okay, well, I can't go any higher. It's as high as I can go. 182 volts, and it's dead. LED is out. So that's interesting. Shorting the emitter and base together seems to increase this breakdown voltage. So what do I think is going on here? Well, I'm no semiconductor physicist, but what I believe is going on is leakage current that's flowing through the collector into the base and then out the emitter, which turns this transistor on. Because if you remember transistor action, a little bit of base to emitter current can control the collector current. So that leakage current is forward biasing the base emitter junction and allows the transistor to turn on more. And that's why we start seeing the LED glow brighter. And when we shorted the base emitter junction together, you can't have the forward bias because you're shorting it directly out of the base to the emitter. So there's no current passing through the base emitter junction and no longer can the transistor turn on. And by the way, the breakdown voltage figure when the base and emitter are shorted together is known as VCES. Okay, next is the voltage collector to base with the emitter open. So I rearranged the circuit here so I'm putting the voltage on the collector and coming out of the base. The emitter is open in this condition. And it's already at maximum voltage and nothing. So VCBO will be higher. I know some data sheets have that voltage the same, but normally the transistor will have a higher VCBO voltage. Another thing I'm curious about is if I damage the transistor doing these tests. Well, when I started, it had a gain of 218. And the, the gain would always change if it gets damaged. And, well, it didn't do anything to it. Now, a way to damage a transistor is to reverse bias this base emitter junction. This voltage is usually between 5 and 8 volts. It'll start conducting between 5 and 8 volts. And if that happens, the transistor will be slightly damaged. You'll lose some gain, and it might even make the transistor a little bit more noisy. So that's one thing you want to be careful of. Now, of course, under this condition, VCEO, without any current limiting, this transistor can conduct heavily, 
and with a large voltage plus a large current that's going to instantly damage the transistor. So I found this diagram which illustrates what we were just looking at. The x-axis is the voltage on the transistor, on its collector, and the y-axis is the collector current. And you can see here, with the emitter grounded, we get the smallest breakdown voltage. We didn't do this one, but if you add a resistor, it's going to shun away some of the charge carriers, so it's not going to forward bias the base emitter junction as much as if it was left open. So this voltage goes higher. And what we did here is when we shorted the base and emitter together, you see this breakdown voltage goes even higher still. And another condition is when you connect the base to ground, which we did also, is you can see the breakdown voltage is the highest. So I was curious what I would get if I tried a few more transistors. And that one I had had a higher breakdown voltage because one of these started conducting at 105. That's the VCEO I was measuring. And uh, these other two were around 115. I also tried the BD140, which is a PNP transistor. Of course, I have to test with a negative voltage on the collector. And it broke down at a much higher voltage of 145. So I'd say you have plenty of headroom if you want to stick with the BD-139 and 140 and run the amplifier at a higher voltage. Unless the amplifier gets extremely hot, overheated, it might possibly be an issue. But beyond that, I think you're okay. So there you go, a little experiment with transistor breakdown voltages. Didn't damage anything. I don't want to use my expensive transistors because I... Spent quite a few quat lose on those, but yeah, you know, we didn't really damage anything anyway. So, well, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.